respond to the indicator dilution method equation forms so many uh, uh, the basis for so many uh, bi biological and chemistry uh, equations. So here also we will use this equation to derive a, derive a cardiac output uh, value. Uh, the, the dye in this case is endocyanin green or of course nicknamed nickname cardio green and obviously the concentration of cardio green the dye that we will inject will be known. So that's that will be depicted by say the letter A, okay, known concentration of a dye. And then when we have injected this amount, say around 5 ml, okay, uh, the diluted concentration of the dye in the fluid will be depicted as C, okay. And what is the unknown? What do we want to know? We want to know the fluid in which it has been diluted in, which will uh, reflect the cardiac output. That is denoted by V. Is we are at this point, this point here, we are injecting the, the cardio green, okay, a, a known amount of cardio green. And as you as you can see, then we plot this graph, and this graph graph basically looks at the dye concentration in the blood uh, 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 plotted against time. So you can see that uh, the concentration does not go up. Uh, uh, in any significant way in the initial uh, initial uh, uh, one second or two. Uh, this is where, this is because the dye has been injected directly or as close as possible to the heart itself and it's passing through the heart, okay? And now, because you are looking at, you are having these uh, serial uh, measurements of the dye from an artery, peripheral artery, now the concentration starts to rise, okay? Because it has now come in the circulation. When it, when, when it starts to rise pretty rapidly, it peaks, flattens a bit, and then drops rapidly, okay? Now, this is where I need to explain something. When it drops and comes here, this is where it's still in the circulation. But at this point, it, has, it will enter the heart again. And hence, its concentration will go back again. We are not interested in that. We are only interested in one circulation because we want to understand cardiac output for that one circulation, okay? So what we'll do is from this point onwards, we'll just extrapolate that if there were only one circulation, theoretically speaking, of course, what would have been its value uh, along the projected line, the projected line, and we'll just finish it off by uh, extending it when it, and when it hits the uh, x-axis, okay? This is stranded extrapolation. Uh, used uh, in mathematics commonly. So by this, we get that area under the curve. It's called area under the curve. And this is the average value of the dye. Okay, so you see the problem is when you inject uh, a liquid, a dye or whatever, inside a, a chamber which has moving blood, a moving liquid. So for example, in a human body, you have moving blood and you inject something, uh, the dynamics of this substance in this moving blood uh, is different as compared to when you introduce a, uh, the same amount of a substance in a beaker, which has static uh, or stationary fluid. Okay, so there's a, they, these are differences. When you do it in a human being, in, a, in an alive human being, what happens is typically, the concentration in the art in, in whatever vessel you're measuring it will go up uh, uh, after it has equilibrated with the rest of the fluid in the body. Uh, say it, it does not get absorbed or metabolized by any tissue in the body, it just stays in blood nicely. Uh, for that to happen, it needs to be equilibrated, then the, it will rise, and then you can you take you can take your value and then eventually it will come down. So there is a dynamic of the substance that you are injecting there is a there, there is an in inherent dynamic of the substance itself you need to be uh, you need to take that into account when you are using this substance to study something else so in this case uh, at t1 the concentration will be different at t2 the concentration will be different and you are interested in what happened during t1 and t2 because that is your average dye concentration you're not only concentrate uh, uh, interested in when it goes up sharply 
you're not only interested in when it plateaus and you are not interested only in when it comes down you are interested in all of it so you need an you need an averaged value of this dye in blood and that for that you have done all of this extrapolation so that you can get a good understanding of the area under the curve which gives you the averaged value for the dye and why are we harping about this diluted concentration or this area under the curve because this will reflect uh, our cardiac output this will reflect uh, the cardiac output because this is where uh, indirectly the dye got diluted uh, by the blood by the moving blood so how much did the blood move to dilute this finite amount of dye over time will reflect the cardiac output so uh, we've done this we've done the graph now just uh, put the values in the the, the, the formula c1 v1 is equal to c2 v2 and we, we arrive at A is equal to A being the known uh, uh, amount of dye is equal to C, which is the diluted amount, which of course in this case will be C average, okay, uh, which is basically depicted here. Uh, so C average multiplied by the uh, unknown volume, and this will reflect the cardiac output. You solve this for cardiac output, you keep the V here, uh, and C goes un tucked underneath A, and this is the final picture that you get v is equal to a over c the known amount of dye divided by the diluted amount uh, average diluted amount will give you a, a good picture of the cardiac output